Hey guys, welcome to Priceless B-Movies. I'm your host, Colin Price. You know, it seems to me that in the last few years, when it comes to horror movies, we're starting to get into uh, something of a kind of fatigue. You know, we're starting to see a lot of the same stuff. A lot of movies like uh, Insidious and The Conjuring, they're just starting to play copycat with these films. We're getting a lot of possession movies. We're getting a lot of ghost movies. We're getting a lot of this family moves into this house and then this happens movies. And you know, it's just getting kind of stale. And now when... All of us, and all of us critics, all the audiences, you know, we're starting to cry out for original, give us something new, come on, break the mold, this is getting really boring. Gore Verbinski, the man who brought us the remake of The Ring, the awesome remake of The Ring back in 2002, has come to show us the way. A Cure for Wellness. A Cure for Wellness is a new film by Gore Verbinski, and, uh, you know, I was really surprised when I saw this movie because when it came out, I saw some of the ads on TV, you know, and we saw the images of, you know, the girl in the tub with the eels and, you know, the weird stuff going on. But it, it was kind of, it was honestly kind of ingenious because it didn't tell you anything about what the movie was. Well, when the movie came out a few months ago, it got kind of meh reviews from critics. And so I was thinking, hmm, well, maybe I'll pass it up. But you know what? I caught it a few days ago, and I'm really glad I did. This is a surprise, and I think that, you know, I've, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Mainstream critics, get your heads out your asses! This is a wonderful film. It stars Dane DeHaan from Amazing Spider-Man uh, 1 and 2 and from Chronicle as a, a young executive at this uh, financial firm, and... He is kind of confronted and he's told, yeah, we know that you and your boss have been up to some shady dealings here and possibly some illegal activity, and, uh, you know, but we don't want to pin it on you. We want the senior guy. Well, the senior guy, his CEO, seems to be stuck in this weird-ass clinic in the Swiss Alps. So they send Dehan to this clinic overseas to go get the guy and bring him back to start legal proceedings. Don gets to this clinic, though, and it turns into a kind of Shutter Island kind of thing. Like, the doctors are all, and the nurses and all that are all kind of off, if not just downright menacing. And, you know, before long, uh, Dehan ends up stuck at this clinic. They, he's not sure if they're going to let him leave, and it becomes this mystery to figure out what is going on at this place. Granted, there are a few movies that are kind of like this, including, as I said, Shutter Island, where someone gets to, you know, some... Uh, out their location, you know, or even like the Wicker Man, you know, where you get here and then all the people in this place seem to be just kind of off, just kind of weird, you know, and I, I could go on and on, you know, like I said, Shutter Island, uh, the Wicker Man, even Stepford Wives, you know, it, it, the, the idea of you go to this location and you know what you know, and you think you know it all. You think you're worldly, but you get here and then everything's off, and you don't know how to react. You don't know what to make of anything. And that's really the dilemma that uh, Dehan's character faces throughout the rest of the movie. He's trying to unravel the mystery of what is going on at this place. Uh, a lot of um, the therapies that the doctors, you know, they, they, a lot of it is hydrotherapy. A lot of it has to do with water. And he finds out there's an aquifer, this really old aquifer underneath the ground. And, you know, apparently they claim this water has healing abilities. And people, very rich people, come to this location, come to this clinic, so that they can uh, cleanse themselves in a way. At least that's what they're being sold. But obviously this being a horror movie, there's a little more to it than that. The director of this clinic is played by Jason Isaacs in a really menacing and creepy performance. You know, I love Jason Isaacs because, you know, in everything he's in, you know, and most people I'm sure who are watching these videos know him from the Harry Potter films as Draco's father, but, you know, everything he's in, I, I mean, the guy's got this quality about him where he could stand there and just tell you, good morning, and you'd think, oh, a creepy, creepy freaking guy, what the hell, did you see that guy? He's just creepy, I don't know what it was. All he said was good morning. I know that, I know that, but the guy is creepy. That's all I'm saying. But even when he's playing a nice character, you're always kind of looking at him, suspecting him of being kind of crooked or kind of villainous in some way. Here he gets to go full villain. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's going to be, when you watch this movie, there's going to be some things about that guy that really just make you hate him. And over the course of the film, he's kind of the Nurse Ratchet character in a way. You know, from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. But there's so much more to him than that. And he makes a very striking villain in this film. 
This movie is flat out gorgeous. I'm not going to give too much away about the particulars of the plot and the actual mystery of what's going on at the hospital, but I do want to make a couple of points because this film struck me. As I said, when I uh, was reading reviews when it first came out, a lot of critics just kind of panned it, and they panned it for the length, and that I can actually understand. As I said, this movie is very long. It's about two and a half hours long, and you feel that two and a half hours when you're watching it. It's not like two and a half hours where it's like, oh, it's that long, but it's so exciting that it breezes through. No, there's a lot of talk. There's a lot of uh, discovery. There's a lot of exposition in this film, and for a lot of people, it's going to be too much. It's going to be too much, and especially when it gets into the third act and things start going a little, well, let's just say bonkers, it's going to kind of turn some people off, I think. But I really enjoyed this film. I think that in a lot of ways, especially in the look of the film, the music in the film, and uh, some of the more spoiler-esque uh, themes in the movie, this is almost more like a Grimm's fairy tale masquerading as a psychological thriller. I found a lot in this movie that I like, and, you know, I, I really wish that people would take more chances like this. Yeah, critics didn't like it. Yeah, it didn't make a lot of money, but for, for the people like me who are really sick of seeing the same old stuff at the theater when they go see a horror movie, this film is a real treat. Also, while there are some frightening ideas in the film, I do want to point out that this is a mu this is a film that is much more disturbing than it is scary. And you'll know what I mean by that. When it's not so much scary like, oh, something's gonna jump out at you, it's more like creep under your skin and just kinda like, like really weird you out with uh, sequences like a, uh, a dental torture scene that comes in uh, toward the end of the second act that even had me cringing. I, I, there's a lot of things that I can watch and be like, oh, that's kind of gross, but okay. Yeah, I can't watch, like, Dental Torture. I, uh, Marathon Man and all those movies. I, that kind of, like, mm, I don't want to think about that kind of stuff. That one scene in this movie had me turning away, and I almost never do that in films. If that is any kind of recommendation... We also do get that one scene, that one scene that you know what I'm talking about, where you know, here's the person, like I said, and they're in this place and everyone starts acting wonky, where the main character just stands up and he goes, my God, what's wrong with you people? Don't you understand how messed up this is? Trying to re And uh, they do that scene in this film where uh, Dahan stands up in front of all the patients and the doctor and he goes, what the hell do you, are you people thinking? Don't you realize how wrong this is? And you know that there's something terrible going on at this place. And then one of the patients stands up, and Dahan's just like, Yeah! Yeah, that's great! You, yes, you know what I'm talking about! And another person stands up, and another. And finally, all these patients seem to be approaching the doctor, you know, Jason Isaacs, and then, you know, you think watching the movie, you're like, Okay, something's gonna happen! This is great! An uprising! Finally! You know, and then they walk right past the doctor and start converging on Dahan, and you get this really unsettling notion, you know, that, that they are so built into this structure and so obsessed with this supposed cure that they're getting for God knows what, that they're willing to completely abandon their humanity. A lot of disturbing things, like I said, more disturbing than scary in this film. But you know, whether you love or hate a cure for wellness, and because I, I say that because there are some who will love it, and obviously there have been some that have hated it. You cannot say that this is not one of the most original horror movies in a while. And for that, i got to give it three and a half stars. This is a very smart and surprisingly Lovecraftian horror film, and I really hope that people out there disregard the mainstream reviews and give it a chance. Yes, it's long. Yes, the reviews on Rotten Tomatoes aren't great. But man, just give it a shot. Just give it a shot. You will find that... A lot of people have been kind of crapping on this movie for very little reason other than the length of the film. That's my review for Cure for Wellness. Stay tuned, I got a lot more reviews coming. Also, in addition to older films, if there are new films that come out and you think they're kind of overlooked or they're box office bombs or the critics hate them, but you see them and you think, oh man, this is fantastic, and you want to know what I think about it, let me know in the comment section below and I'll see what I can do about getting a copy of that movie and putting up a review for you. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more Priceless B Movies.